to Kid Time Story Time, where the story time is going to read an apple for Harry Tubman. Thank you very much, Red Bear. Now, did I ask you a question before I go? Uh oh, sure, sure. What is it, Red Bear? Well, I, I, I read about Harry Tubman in school. Oh, you already have? Yeah, yeah. And she was this brave lady who helped free people from slavery, you know? Uh huh, that is exactly right. But I don't remember anything about apples. I mean, nowhere in any of my stories I hear anything about apples. Okay, so Red Bear, what is the one treat that you as a kid love more than anything else? Well, for me, I'm really big into honey sticks. It's my thing, you know. I know it's a little stereotypical for bears, but it's really my thing. I can't help it. Okay, so honey sticks are your thing. And I, and I eat them as often as I can. Well, can you imagine if you had honey sticks everywhere? Oh, yeah, I sure can. But... You could not have a single one. <gasps> no! Well, shall we see about the apples? Oh, you mean the apples? And you could have what? Okay, please read. Okay, this is the story about Harriet Tubman that perhaps you have not heard. Because you know, Harriet, she was a hero and a very brave pioneering woman. But first, she was a kid. Harriet was born into slavery around the year 1820. There she is, the baby. Her parents, Ben and Rich Ross, were enslaved on the Brodess Plantation in Maryland. I guess it's Brodess. Brodess? Brodess? It is French. Because their parents were the property of Edward Brodess, Harriet and her brothers and sisters belonged to him too, according to the law at the time. Now the slaves, well... They had a hard life. They chopped down trees, cleared swamps, tended the tobacco fields, and did all the other jobs on the plantation. The slaves did not get paid and had to do everything their overseers told them to do. Even children had to work. Eat it, kids! No! Yep, they made the kids work too. Oh, tough times. They were tough times. So... When Harriet was only seven years old, not much older than Red Bear, uh, Edward Brodess sent her to work for an unkind woman named Miss Susan. I guess that's Miss Susan? Sleeping with a whip in her hand? Oh, that is very unkind. One of Harriet's jobs was to sit up all night taking care of Miss Susan's baby so her crying would not wake her mother. If the baby did cry, Miss Susan would whip Harriet. Oh, oh. That's horrible. And also not a great mother, not a great example. Times were different. Later on, Harriet worked in the fields. She liked working outdoors where she could feel the fresh breezes, see the sunshine, watch the birds fly free. Chip, 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 chip. Picking apples was her favorite outdoor job. Whenever she held a shiny red apple in her hand, she wished, oh, how she wished she could take a big bite out of it. She longed to know if it tasted as good as it looked. You mean she she was picking apples, but she had never tried one? No, not at all. Oh, oh, I can't even imagine. Yeah, I know. Well, she didn't like the fact that she and the other slaves were expected to pick and wash and polish these luscious looking apples, but were forbidden to eat any. She didn't think it was fair that slaves did all the work and the family in the big house got to eat the apples. Each day, as Harriet picked and polished the apple, she looked for the chance to crunch into one. One day, when the overseer was walking down to the other end of the orchard, she thought, this is my chance. But, oh no, just as she was biting deep into a delicious apple, the overseer whirled around and caught her. Angrily, he took his whip, jeez, does everybody have a whip around here, and lashed Harriet. The whip tore through her clothing and into her flesh. It left scars that lasted the rest of her life and not just scars on her body but probably scars on her soul too that's very traumatic well she couldn't fight back or do anything about it back then but she made herself a promise one day i'm going to be free and i'm going to have all the apples i want okay let's see how you do harriet years passed and harriet married a free man by the name of john Tubman. Ah. In 1849, she learned that she might be sold and sent away from her husband and sisters and brothers. Harriet took action. She ran away from the Brodess plantation. She walked until she reached a safe house, a place where she knew members of the 
Underground Railroad would help her. Now, when I was a kid, I used to think that the Underground Railroad was a real railroad under the ground, like like a subway train. It's not. No, it's it. It was just they called it a railroad because it transported people. Yeah, but there was no train. Nope, they actually did it on foot, but they called it a railroad. Oh, did you clarify that? Yeah, I, I thought you might need to know because I thought it was a railroad too. Well. She knew that the members of the underground plantation were there and would help her. Now, here it explains the Underground Railroad was not a railroad, but a group of black and white men and women who took great risks to help people escape from slavery. Then, through the dense forest and the chilly swamps, she followed the North Star towards the north, which meant freedom. She was always on the lookout for slave hunters and <laughs> their bloodhound dogs. So, I mean, think about this big escape in the middle of the night, very dangerous. Later, Harriet was hidden in a farm wagon and taken to another safe house. Finally, she reached the Delaware Bay in the state of Delaware. This boatman helped her cross to the New Jersey shore. And from there, she made her way to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Here in the north, she was free, just as she promised herself that she would be. Look at all that effort to get to freedom. But freedom is always worth the sacrifice. But Harriet, well, she wasn't happy living in freedom while her family was still enslaved. Yeah, I can totally relate to that. Oh, can you, Red Bear? Yeah, I mean, if if my brothers and my grandma and stuff, if we if we didn't have, you know, if I was happy with my my honey sticks, but they couldn't have any, then I would be sad. I would want to share. Well, she wanted to share her freedom too. How's she doing? Well, let's keep reading. Okay. Well, she was, in, she was in freedom, but she wasn't happily because her family was still enslaved. So she went off to work as a maid and a cook. Why? Well, because you make money when you start working. She saved that money and went back again and again to Maryland to free her family and lead many other people out of slavery. Now, as you can imagine, it was extremely dangerous for Harriet to do this. There was a huge reward for her capture. The slaveholders were very angry that she had become an underground railroad conductor. Remember, it's not a real train, but it's like she was a conductor guiding other slaves to freedom. But she and her passengers were never caught. Not one time. How about that, huh? In 1869, Harriet bought her own house near Auburn, New York. What did she do? What's she doing right here? She planted rows of apple trees along the lane that led from the road to her home. It had taken a long time, but she was finally able to keep the second part of her promise that she had made to herself. Each fall, when the apples were ripe and ready for picking, Harriet Tubman had all the people come and pick so that everybody from the town could eat the apples. She invited the entire townspeople to come and fill their baskets, and Harriet Tubman finally had all the apples she could eat, just like she dreamed about when she was a little kid. Harriet Tubman's apples were a symbol of freedom for everyone to share. Oh, so she finally got to eat her apples. Yes, exactly. And, 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 and more, more. She also helped her family eat all the apples she wanted and her town people eat all the apples she wanted. So she made her dream come true, but also... Yes, oh yes, yes, Red Bear, you're very excited. Yeah, because I, I love learning about stories where people's dreams come true. And she not only made her dream come true, but she made everybody else's dreams come true because that's what great americans do that is what great dreamers do they make their dreams come true and they also help other people make their dreams come true and in this case a dream for freedom and justice wow i really like this story i didn't know about the apples oh it kind of makes me want to have an apple with honey can i go have a snack now absolutely snack time is always good after kid time story time yeah See you next time, kids. I'm going to go eat now.